Oh dang, I'm trying to stop this music. Finally. Hi there everyone. Right. Oh dear. Do I really want to talk about this person? I think we have to. How is everyone? Have you had a good day? Or good morning? Hang on, I've just got to close some programs that are opening up. So, come on. Fucking, oh, it's just my head in when it just this. Oh, it's not letting me close it at the moment. A few minutes, it'll let me close it. I noticed some of you come in chat before I actually started, which was nice. Right, I gather from the conversation that you were talking about Seth joining together with KP and CP. Well, I think we had to let him do what he had to do. I think Dick Danny knew they wouldn't help. Plus, not only that, that, that stance that Chris had towards Seth, that wasn't, oh, hello, let's be friendly, let's work together over this, this is like, no, you will listen to me, I'm not having this no more, you're making me and Katie look like the devils, well, I'm sorry, you are, you're the devil spawn. So, oh, come on, let me close this little flipping out. Anyway, I've had a very quiet day. I was up early because my son was coming over to push my washing machine back into place. And then he left, I came on here, set up my live for tonight, and then fell asleep again. Then I woke up, and I was pottering around, doing a few things, putting some washing on, hanging washing up. Then I fell asleep again. Oh, my Lord. It's getting ridiculous. So... The last time I fell asleep, I woke up about four o'clock-ish in the afternoon, three, four. And I thought, okay, I'll have a takeout. I'll have it delivered. Now, I've got a whacking great big feck off doorbell on my door. You cannot miss it. You cannot. And when you hit the bell, the buzzer, It'll come through on my phone. No. No, 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 no. They don't hit their flipping buzzer. Right? They phone me. So, I miss my phone call because my phone plays up a lot. So, I phoned them back. And they said, yeah, uh, we tried to, um, we knocked on the door, got no answer, and we phoned you. I said, I've got two doors. I've got an outer door, which you knock, and an inner door. When that inner door is shut, I don't hear my door getting knocked. That's why I've got a great big feather doorbell on my front door. So, and I actually said that to her. I said, it's, it's a feather big doorbell. Ring the doorbell. I will answer the door. Right, so I said, can you bring it back up? No, can you come down? So I've had to grab my keys, go down 14 floats in a lift. Yeah, okay. 
to get my flipping meal. I'm going to have to get a big sign and stick it on my door. Doorbell. Use it with an arrow pointing to it. I don't know why people don't use doorbells. What is wrong with doorbells? So I wasn't happy about that. Because by the time I've gone down the fourteen flights and come back up, my milk was stone cold. Stone flipping cold. But are you serious now? And my lift is as slow as a fucking tortoise. I think a tortoise goes quicker than my flipping lift. So that's my day being today. Got a bit of washing done and fell asleep two or three times this today. So oh. um we're talking about CP pulling disguise. Why? Now, I in between on my sleeps and doing my household chores, I even done some binge watch watching of some interviews of theirs. I tried to watch that Nina one, but I just couldn't watch it all. It just gets to me every time. I keep trying. I do keep trying to watch it and I can't. It gets to that part where her little boy turns around to her and says, Mummy, you go over there and I'll go I'll run really, really, really fast and I'll grab Faith and I'll bring her back to you and you can drive away. That's when it gets to me. When her little boy says that to her. When she had the visiting rights. Right, so. And the fact of how they. They got her daughter in the first place. That was disgusting how they treated her. She went there. To be with him. To work. To work on her marriage. Her, his family. And then they come and threaten her to get out of the house. That's just disgusting. Absolutely. And these are the people we are talking about tonight. And I think Katie knows what they're like. And I think she might be scared of them. She's seen what they did to Nina. She was part of it, wasn't she? She used to, she took the little and ones to five to one of the pickups uh, to where she was having a, the uh, meet up with the daughter, where she spent half an hour with her daughter. Right? So she was there on one of those visits. So she knows exactly what Chris is like and his family. Right? Oh, come on, get the lead back on. So, I think she is scared. Right, I'm going to say something here. I've been watching a lot of videos. Trying to watch, watch them anyway. And they keep going on about the number three. Right? And how often it comes up. Right? And I jotted down some things like, um, what was it now? Where was it? I'll put it this way. There's three of them, isn't there? Three parents. There's Katie, there's Seth, the bio mum and bio father, and Chris. 
the stepfather. That's three. Right, and then some else. What was he? Oh God! But I can't. I can't find my notes now. What I would wear with it down. But I did write down certain things about the number three when it come up. And I don't know what it means. I did hear some say once about what number three means when it comes into a conversation like like three birds or three three of this and three of that. I don't know what it all means. If someone could tell me, I'd be greatly appreciative. But I was watching that video of Nina. And Trev done a great job. I said that from day one. I'd only ever seen clips of it before because I couldn't... I just couldn't bring myself to watch the whole interview. But I thought, no, if I'm going to learn about Chris... I need to know, I need to see this video. I need to see. So, I was watching it, and the way he was towards her when she was having her daughter. You know what I mean? I, don't, I seriously don't think Chris likes children. Seriously, I don't. And, um, and how they had to get these social services in to stop him from, to get him out of the hospital because of how he was towards the, and all that, and I thought, how can anyone do that to a woman? who's just gone through surgery to give birth to your child, right? And then I was seeing people say, well, she shouldn't have had that child. She shouldn't have had a child by him. She knew what he was like. But some women, they just think they can change a person. They can change them. You can't. You can't change no one. Only person who can change that person is themselves. No one else, themselves. Right, so you go into a relationship knowing that is a narcissistic, uh, what was the other words, manipulative, abusive, controlling, right? If you go into a relationship knowing all that, thinking, but I can change him. No, love, you're not. You're not going to change him. And why on earth Katie got into this relationship with him? I do not know. Especially when she's seeing how he was towards Nina. Why did she continue into this relationship with him? Another woman probably thinking, oh, I can change him. No, love, you're not. How many other women are going to fall into this man's trap? How many ever more children are going to be put through the ringer with this man? You are not going to change him, no matter what you do or say. You will not change them. There's a saying, a leopard never changes his spots. And that is true. They don't. So, I went back. I found this video today and I was looking at the, because I've seen something about the bite marks. So I thought, we'll have a look at this video because it's done this short thing. Right. I have got part of the Chronicles of Livia. Of Right, what time? Uh, what was evil? So,
Hmm. Let's try going page. Is this the one? No. Yeah. I'm going to stop. When my mouse stops doing the jig around my flipping screen. And I'll share it with you all. So uh, this is Ethan another good YouTuber. They're very short and to the point. I think the longest one I said it is done is what thirty minutes. Missed. I'd have to check on that again. So. Check it's coming through okay. Yep. I'm gonna put it full screen because then you'll see I'm gonna stop it when it comes to the bite marks. Right. Here we go. Oh god, just help if I take the volume. Oh come on. He was reported missing, and it's unclear whether he ever returned to work. About that night, do you just sleep in the same bedroom? He wasn't actually in the home at all that weekend. Ah, you were not home. No, okay, so where were you, Mr. Proud? Was uh, in Memphis, Tennessee. Oh. How far away is that? Um, three hours and thirty-seven minutes from doorstep to doorstep. Yeah, isn't it funny? He knows exactly how long it takes from doorstep to doorstep. Right? I'd, if it was me and I was a driver, I'd say, oh, it takes about three and a half hours. And about three and a half hours. But he says it takes three, he actually said in one interview, it takes three hours, 33 minutes, doorstep to doorstep. That's what he said in one interview. I thought, why not just three hours, 30 minutes? Right? And I think he must have picked up on that because he did say three hours, 30 minutes in this one. But I know in the other interview he did, he did say three hours, 33 minutes, doorstep to doorstep. I'm thinking, why would you log that? You know what I mean? I would think, I'd just say, oh, it takes about three and a half hours. All right. Hang on, mate. Let's go. And what were you doing in Memphis? Working. Where do you work? Oh, God. I think I'm I'm working, on speed. I was working at the St. Jude Children's Hospital uh, construction project. Oh, God. I'll just check the speed on this. I'm not sure if I've altered the speed because subtitles play back speed. No, it's normal. Okay. Perhaps she's got. It exists. It's got yes, speed. I'm very familiar job. with St. Jude's. You said you were working there. Are you no longer working there? Right now, that's up in the air. Well, you've been gone ever since Sebastian went missing, so I understand. The family home has three bedrooms, a master bedroom, a room for Sebastian, and then a room for Faith, Chris's daughter, for when she visits. There is no ring camera. Or it's up in the air. His job was up in the air because he got kicked off the uh, crane. He was told to get out the crane. Come down and get out of the bank because of his demeanour, his attitude that morning that Sebastian went missing. Alarm system at the home, but neighbours have been very keen on offering any footage they may have. Here is the part where my jaw dropped though. I've seen Chris post on Facebook that he has taken a polygraph test and passed it. However, that took a total turn on the Nancy Grace show where he stated he never took a polygraph. Katie took one and she apparently passed. Chris offered to take one. 
but law enforcement told him it wasn't necessary because of his whereabouts at the time. Had the two of you taken a polygraph? I have. I have not. I've offered and volunteered on many occasions to take a polygraph, and I was told directly by law enforcement because of my whereabouts. I did not need one. But did you pass your polygraph? I did. Chris was working in Memphis, more than three hours away. He says that he left early February and didn't return until after he was called and told Sebastian was missing. He also said he can't speak to specific dates because law enforcement told him not to. When Chris is working, he stays in an RV in an RV park. And Mr. Prophet, when did you leave town? Early February.
We know that Katie knows about this because, as I said, she was one of the people who took faith to meet Nina on the visiting, when she had the visiting rights for half an hour once a week or something like that. Katie was one of those people that took faith. So we know Katie knows. So why on earth did Katie get with someone like that family? It doesn't make sense. And this was before they got married. So why did she marry him? Knowing what he was like. Right? And then... Hold on. Now, <coughs> there's rumour going around, apparently, I've, see, I've seen it as well, I'm not saying what YouTube YouTuber is, but she said since a confirmation, this is correct. So I don't know how true that is, this is, but the rumour is, CP was seen leaving the house 1008 Stafford Court at about 9pm that night 9pm or 9.30pm now I'm sure I heard Seth say that every time Chris went to work left the house and went to work he would phone Katie and they would talk to each other on the phone while he was driving down to work. So that would make sense, that three and a half hour phone call, three hour phone call. But he states he was in Mississippi, Memphis, wherever. Now surely if he was at the house, they would have some sort of record. The police would have some sort of record of his car. Hold on. They would have some sort of record. He's got a new car, which 2022 or 23, he said. So he'd have all the tracking on it. It would be all that tracking on the car. So they would know if he was at that house. They would know. Because it would say where his car, because some of these cars, you now, I don't know if this car would have it, but some of the cars can even tell you when the door was opened, when the door was shut, everything. I don't like that sort of car. Too nosy, you know, in my business, you know. Right, but it would know where the car was and when it moved and all that. Like, it would know all that. So if that was the case, Lada said, hold on, you're telling us you was in, you was in Memphis, but your car is telling us you was at the house on Sunday night. So I don't think... If that was the case, I think they'd have pulled him in a lot sooner. Right? Because the times, like, he left to go to work at 9 o'clock. Sebastian was told to go to bed at 9 o'clock. And then she's on the phone to him until he gets to work, apparently. If that was the case. And, um, he never mentions anything about that flood that Katie goes on about. Why is that? He doesn't say anything about that. It doesn't confirm Katie or anything. Now, if that was me and I was talking to my husband and I was shouting through to my son or heard a thug, I go, hold on, I just heard your thug come from the boys, from Simon, my son's room. And my husband will know about it. 
So he'd be able to say, yes, I was on the phone with that. She heard this noise come from the bedroom and uh, she went to check on him. But he didn't say nothing. He didn't say nothing about that thud. Why? Why didn't he say something? Right? Because it doesn't prove he was there or not, whether he said, yeah. He could say, yeah, I didn't hear the thug, but I heard Katie shout, was that you, Bubba? Did you fall off your bed? Or don't know what you're doing in there, but whatever it is, get to bed. He could have told, said that, but he hasn't said nothing about that part of the conversation. Why? Did that conversation not actually happen? Right? Now, there's another video I want you to watch. Not all of it, as I said, we're not watching them all. It's just clips of them. And, uh, um, it's too hard. Stop screaming. <coughs> Hold on. I really have got to phone my doctors up, but I need to phone them at 8 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> to get an appointment. We're not getting an appointment. What happens? You phone them up, you tell them the problem, and then they will tell the doctor, and the doctor phones you up then. If he thinks he needs to see you, he'll make an appointment for you. If he thinks, no, I can just give you some medication. He'll write a script out for you, prescription out for you, and you go and get it. You go and pick it up. But, <coughs> <coughs> but you have to phone up at eight in the morning. Uh, I'm still in, I'm still in uh, Noggy Land. I do wake up, but not to the point where I'm awake. I wake up and I think, oh. And then I'm back asleep. And even at 10 o'clock, when I've got up at 10 o'clock, I'm still not fully functioning till about 12 p.m. 12 p.m. or 1 p.m. in the afternoon. That's when I start to function. So it takes me a good two, three hours to function once I get up. So for me to get up at 8 o'clock, it's like, I can't do this. But I'm going to have to do it because I really do need to go to my doctor's. Hold on. Anyway, so we're going to watch this video when I can pull it up again. All right, um, is it not? <coughs> I have had this video on before, and we have gone through all of this video before, so I don't really want to go through it all again. As I said, it's just certain points I want to highlight. So. Um, right, where is he? Oh, there he is. Right, let's get back to the beginning. Oh, God. Right, now this Chronicles of Olivia. And as I said, I'm not going to show all the video. But it just 
just watch how they react with each other. Watch the body language between the two of them. Right? That's all I will say. On the clips that I show, just watch the body Now, the first one is at 357. Let's talk. Right. Okay, then. Right. Now, watch the body language and what they say. He's already what? He's already what? Who's already? Chris? Is Chris already there? Or Sebastian, is he already not with us anymore? What? Here it comes. She forgot what she had to say then because she got a bit flustered because that cough was all get back on track. On track. Right? And so, uh, oh, God, what do I have to say now? And that's when she starts going on about, oh, that was the other three. Three that come into conversation. The three-way call. Listen to this. Right. Now, if they're on a three-way conversation, three-way phone call to law enforcement, he told her or put her on mute, but she would still be able to hear the conversation. Right? Hold oh, on, I have not presented it, have I? Sorry. Sorry. What am I doing tonight? Right. Right, we'll go back. Right, we'll start from there. Um, right, this is... Uh, three ways. Okay, three ways. Law enforcement. Sorry. What do you mean? I said he's not inside the house. We can't find our son. And um, I'd like, I jumped in my car and I drove around the neighborhood and I drove over by the school and he's already... Like, I, at this point, I was, like, hysterical, and I was crying. He's already what? And um, <coughs> he was, like, um, uh, three-way, he three-way law enforcement, and um, was telling them, like, our son is missing, and we don't know what's going on, and he, like, he was, like, go back to the house, they're on their way, and I ran back, well, drove back to the house, and um, 20 days later, we even found him. Yeah, I can't even imagine. Right? So there's quite a bit there. Like, you had the babbling on about going to the school. He was all already, what? What? He was, who was already? He. He was already. What? Who was? Sebastian? Or was Chris already there? Or was Sebastian already gone? I don't know. It's just the way she stopped. And then she continues, but then it throws that coughing. It does that coughing and it throws her off balance. It's like, oh, she, she, what, what have I got to say now? And that's when she's fumbling up, thinking about a three-way call. So as I said, that's when number three comes into it again, the three-way call. Right? And then the next bit was at 4.20. Yeah, 423, we've actually gone past it, so we'll go back to it. Well, drove back to from the house. house and um, 20 days later, we even found him. Still go back uh, for 23. 
I'm going to go get this thing. I'm moving on. Go back to the house. They're on their way, and I ran back to the pool. Yeah. Back to the house, and... Um... That's what I wanted to point out. Why? If she's on mute, why? But why did he tell her to go back to the house? If she can hear what is being said, even when you're on mute, you can hear what the other person's saying. They just can't hear you. Right? But you can hear them. I'm sure you can. But not only that, why do a three-way phone call if you're going to put her on mute? Why didn't he just say, right, get back to the house, I'll find law enforcement now. Yep. Why do a three-way call if he wasn't going to have her in a conversation? He wasn't even at the house, so how can he tell them what had happened? My, son, my stepson's gone missing. What time? Six o'clock this morning. He wasn't in his bed when we went to pick him up. He wasn't even there. So they need to speak to the mother who was there. She's the one who can give them all the information, not him. So that three-way call just bugs the life out of me. And it's like that, oh, yeah, the other one the is a phone call on a Sunday night. Three-hour phone call, three-way the place there's another three that's got to come into it yeah well i'm going to be here if we see that or not right right i'm gonna skip i can't remember when it was now uh probably well just listen to this bit theories right you can talk about that you think what i can tell you is with all law enforcement with everybody that's involved, there's nothing that's been eliminated. Everything is on the table. Everything is being looked at from every possible aspect. Um, Everything from he got out and walked away and was outside of the search radius before we started searching to the worst. Before we started searching, we. Where's the we in you two out there searching? Because you out there searching. You didn't leave your house. Not even to put a flipping flyer out there. Nothing came from you or him. You shoved your head in the sand and hoped it all went away. And, and that's currently where we're at. I mean, it's... Yeah. Really trying not to go down that road because well, we're gonna find him. Right. Follow across. Um I'm sorry, I've just seen your message. I'm not hearing the conversation. Is it you're not hearing me or you're not hearing the video? Because I can't turn the video up any louder because that's um by Chronicles of Olivia. But if you're not hearing me, that's a different story. Speculating causes problems. Assumptions cause issues. And based on facts of what everybody knows, right now, there's nothing. And everything is still on the table to be looked at. Right. What are your Get back theories? to that beginning again because I I'm missed sure that you're bit. Where they said we did with the searches. Mind just thought of every possible thing that could have happened, but is is there any theory that you can talk about that you think? Okay, then thanks. What I can tell you is, with all along that everybody that's involved, there's nothing that's been eliminated. Everything is on the table. Possible aspect. Um, 
everything from he got out and walked away and was outside of the search radius before we started searching to I did hear that right, didn't I? Before we started searching. And and that's currently where we're at. I mean, it's... Yeah. Really trying not to go down that road because well, we're going to find him. Speculating causes problems. Assumptions cause issues. And based on facts of what everybody knows, right now, there's nothing. And everything is still on the table to be looked at. You just know he's out there somewhere. Oh, we know you know he's out there somewhere. We know you know there somewhere. But as for the fact that you said he got out the search range before we started searching, you haven't done no searching. Get off your flipping high horse. Oh, and apparently. I was watching another YouTube earlier and someone in his chat had phoned that motorbike shop up where they was the weekend on this, what day did they do the vigil, the Saturday or the Sunday? I can't remember. Anyway, I've got these headphones hurt my ears sometimes. Um... The guy, this guy phoned the motorbike shop up, right, and asked them about KP and CP coming into the shop, right, and was they there to arrange a rally, sort of thing, a bike rally. He said, no. There was not. They didn't even mention Sebastian. They were there to look at the bikes and whatever else. Right? Now, they another woman come through and she said her, I think she said it was her father, was a member of this group, a bikers group, that would go and do rallies and everything for missing children. Right? Now, that was the case. They would have been here at the beginning. Right? Once the search got scaled back, they would have probably come in then. Right? And done a rally or whatever. They don't wait nearly 60 days before doing a rally. They don't. And why are they making it sound like, oh, in two weeks' time, it's a rally sort of thing? Why? Why not next weekend? Why is it taking another week to arrange this rally? No, you weren't there to arrange nothing. You was there to look at bikes, maybe think about getting a new bike. I don't know. Or perhaps you needed another part for your bike, a new part to your bike. I don't know. But you was not there to arrange a rally. But we were find that out in two weeks' time, weren't we, Katie and Chris? Especially Chris. He's the one who's controlling the narrative in this. He's the one who speaks to Seth. He's the one who's telling where she's looking at him to get confirmation that what she's saying is correct. Right? So, he's the one controlling all this. So, when people say he hasn't, he wasn't there, he may not have been there. But I'll tell you now, he knew about it on the Sunday night. And that's why that three-hour phone call lasted, that phone call was three hours. Right, hold on, hold on.
Sorry, my cat, I could do this thud, 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 thudding noise. Yes, I said the word thud. Well, it's more of a bump, 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 bump. And I could do, do a meow. And I thought, that's very quiet for my cats. He's only gone and gone in the bathroom. I've not realised he shut the bathroom door and he can't open the door. And that's what I could do even with his paw trying to open the door and the door's just bumping against the frame. I swear to God, they're going to be the death of me, those cats are. Anyway, so... He then has a dig at all the YouTubers and all that lot. Because worm coming up with these, stu well, I must admit there are some stupid theories out there. Right? I must admit, I said one night I'm alive. MG was on it, and she said, I'm really choked on my coffee then. Because I was talking about that light scenario, the, the torches. The timeline is actually from all gone. It's actually from the restaurant at six thirty in the night before the night before. That's when he was like Exactly. Now someone else mentioned today that Seth had been asking for proof of life. Why why did he need why was he asking for proof of life? Did he not believe Katie? And he said himself, when he first went to the house, her story changed and she she wasn't telling, saying everything she knew. Right? He just got that feeling that she wasn't saying everything she knew and that her story had changed. And um, someone said, but why would you ask for proof of life? It's just his way of saying, because he works with the law enforcement, right? Just a word, a way they speak, proof of life. And to be honest with you, I've started using that word a lot now. Have they got proof of life? <laughs> right? So, um, anyway, what was I saying? But if they say, they say, law enforcement say, they've got, Ring doorbell footage of Sebastian bringing the rubbish out. Yep. I said, if those lights above the garage was on, which Chris said they was, in the interview with Nancy Grace, he said the lights above the garage were always kept on. Now, I'm pretty sure if that was the case, you'd have seen some sort of figure and sort of like be a, a slim body build or a, a, a wider body build of a person walking into the garage. Yeah, you'd have seen that. The lights were on. It would just show some sort of a figure going into the garage or walking up towards the garages after taking the bin out, the trash bin down. But Seth said, it's too grainy, too dark. All you can see is a little torch, a little hand torch, a very small hand torch. You can't see nothing else. So, obviously, if that's the case, the light above the garage was not on. So, and yet the police are saying they've got footage of him bringing that out. If they've got footage of that, why can't they show, why didn't they show, um, well, they did show Seth that footage, right? But the, that isn't proof of life to him because he couldn't make it out it was his son. Now, if he can't make out it was Sebastian, how can law enforcement be so certain it was Sebastian? So, so, yeah, I believe the actual time frame is, like you say, from 6.30 when they re left that restaurant. So you're looking at 12 and a half hours. 
Yeah. Something happened in those 12 and a half hours. What? They had plenty of time to work out a plan and to move a body. They really have. And, but for Chris to sit there in that interview and have a dig at the YouTubers and TikTokers, I must admit, I don't agree with some TikTokers because, because they do get right up in your windows of the houses and your cars and everything. They, they just feel there's no boundaries, some TikTokers are. Not all of them, just some. So, but it's sort of like having a dig at the YouTubers, the TikTokers, the everyone who's out there videoing and making videos. He's having a dig at them. No, we're going on the information you're putting out there, Chris. Because law enforcement aren't putting your information out there. You and Katie are. And the information you're putting out there is, it goes like L-I-E-S, lies. Think of this young boy. Katie, this is your son. Think of your son. Think of where he is. Now, as I said the other night, I watched um, uh, FBI Real Files. And it's talking about, um, I'll say trigger warning here, trigger warning coming up. And it was talking about um, decomposition of a body and what happens to it and the insects and all that lot. And I think, I literally, I couldn't eat anything that day. I really could not eat anything. After watching that, I could not eat anything. And because all I could think about was, Sebastian, what if he's lying out there and he's got all this going on with his... I couldn't... It really made me feel sick. Because I'm thinking, come on, Katie, you know where he is. If you don't, then I know Chris does. Because if... If by any chance his family have got anything to do with this, right, they are going to tell Chris where he is. And that is why Chris keeps pushing himself into the investigation. Listen to this video, right? Uh, look. Like this before, and we've gone through this before. But this, just everything you need to know about this guy. Right. I'm not going to stop it, I'm just going to let this one run through because it is only seven minutes. And hold on, hold on. Uh, he's out of North Carolina, I believe. It's only because he's on the phone talking to Trey. Right, you can't really hear that clearly. Woman who's filming this need, needs to have got really close to him to pick it up. So we're going to listen to this and you just listen to Chris. He says, or didn't, I didn't know what, who she actually worked for, so. Um, I don't think I've got streaming ever. Well, I have. <laughs> I have. So just listen to this. Yeah, well, there's a lot of BS out there. That's what, and that's what I heard, and then I read it. I read the article from the actual news, and it said that they, the dog got a scent, a scent that they, uh, from an article clothing or something, and then they tracked all the way here, like several times. Well, here's, here's, here's your there was a, a dispatcher. The, the, 
call got released from the dispatchers to the deputies and the responding units. In that uh, release of information, you can clearly hear the dispatcher and the cops all say the dog's got to send his own hearing response. Okay. And I mean, that it, for people to say, no, it doesn't matter. Yeah, and that's what. It can't you, be the shit they should do with the dispatch. And that's, that's what everybody kept saying, and I'm like, there's got to be some truth to this because that doesn't make any sense. Like, so yeah, they tracked tracked here. So yeah, and then like I said, the path they tracked. So our, if you're in that subdivision, yeah, I'm directly the next subdivision over to the left is our subdivision. Okay. It's called Victoria Place. Okay. The set that they got as soon as you turn in our subdivision, you're on Kelly. Drive it all the way up to the very top of the hill at a four way. You'll see that to the right, they're cutting in the new road that will link all this together. Okay. Yeah. Is that what he's talking about? Directly right there? Oh. Hold on, what was that? Uh, when Katie says she talks to Sebastian when he comes home, he never seems to be seen after he comes home to take the trash out. Even according to Katie, did Sebastian put did Sebastian put in his own diaper? Exactly. Was he in a diaper? An adult diaper. Right? A pull-up. And I must admit, the ones for children are a lot better than the ones the adults use. I know, I used to do care. Care in the community. I used to work. So, they're nothing like those ones. Right? I don't know what they're like in America, but I know in the UK, they are nothing like the ones the adults use. Nothing. So, it, it's, uh, did he have that on when he left? When he left that night? We've only got her word. Bear in mind, we've only got her word that he walked out that door wearing black like joggers, yeah, and a long sleeve black sweat sh sweatshirt with a logo from it on the front. We've only got her word. So, we'll continue with listening to this. I hope you can hear this good enough because. I've got my headphones on, so I can hear it a lot better. Without my headphones, I can't hear this. So attract me. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah, yeah. Do you, do you know how like how much they actually drain? They drain the whole thing. It's okay. So initially, when it, when it, when they went over to look at it, it was only knee deep. Uh, from the picture that you showed, there's a lot of new runoff. Yeah, that's what. Where they're cut, yeah. Trying to figure out. I was like, I don't know how shallow it was before or after. Yeah. I'm, I'm five foot nine, and it was knee deep. Okay. <laughs> so and they, they even drain it and still walk it. Okay, so they actually walked in this. I didn't know that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, and that is actually information that was told to me by law enforcement. Yeah, so they actually. Because I went on a. Me and law enforcement, they could put me in a vehicle. Right. Drove me right around and showed, showed me a bunch of stuff. I'm the only one that they can tell me. Okay. Hey, that. Me and law enforcement went for. Like in a car. I'm the only one that done that. Ooh. Let's continue. So I, I can actually give you a little bit more information than what everybody's out there running their mouth. Yeah. No, I'm not going public with it. No. But honestly, I'm tired of the BS and the rumors. That's what I, I kept trying to tell everybody. I was like, it's, you know, the kid, you know, I said he left the house and then the internet went crazy with rumors and speculation. And I was like, I don't go off of rumors. I go off of what we got now. And, I said something about that pond. I said, and it just stopped. I said, 
Okay, so that's where I want to go. That's where I want to search and try to figure this out. So then, so work backwards from the pond. Okay. If you were to walk from the pond, go straight up into the construction site, you'll see cut the road and just turn left, all the way back, run into the subdivision. If you go down to Kelly, all the way down to Stafford, and walk down towards Stafford toward our house. From our house, if you're looking at my house, I'm going to tell you where the dust is. So on the front porch, all the front porch, you can touch it. All the way down the back side. Of the back side. If, you're looking, if you're looking at my house, okay. it's going to be the right hand side. The dog goes up. Look down the fence. No, I mean, they've had dogs. I can't. I mean, have they, yeah, a lot of dogs. But day one, there was five dogs. There was a Belgian melon one. That. Yeah, um, we know they did confirm that at Texas Roadhouse at six thirty. We know that's what she's saying. The timeline, because there's no actual confirmation that the who put that rubbish being out. You can't tell it. It's too grainy. It's too dark. And as I said, if the lights were on above the garage, it would have picked up some sort of figure, be it a bulky figure or a slimline figure. But it didn't pick none of that up. So those lights were not on on the Sunday night. So they can't confirm. If Seth cannot confirm that's his son, then how on earth can law enforcement say, that's Sebastian? I think Seth knows his son better than law enforcement. So, yeah, the only confirmation we got is when they left the house at 6.30. It wouldn't take a long... No, it wouldn't. But I think that was just cruel to make him wear them all day long, every day. No, that's wrong. It's 15 years of age, you have to persevere with them. Now, if he's di di digressed and gone back to having accidents on the night time and having accidents at school, why is that? Why would a autistic child digress back to that? Why? They wouldn't, unless there was something upsetting them which scared them or bothered them, right? They're not going to go back. They go forward, but I've never heard of an autistic dog going back that bad, right? So, if Chris was around the area, he could have driven to Memphis in time enough to talk. Yes, it could have. Like, as I said, there is a rumour going around and apparently it was confirmed that by a neighbour that Chris's car was seen leaving the house at about 9.30pm. But like I said, he's telling everyone he was down in Memphis on that Sunday. He didn't come home. And I know the reason he didn't come home. I don't know what anyone else says. The reason he wasn't coming home on the weekends is because he wasn't allowed in that house while the investigation was going on with CP, uh, CPS, right, into this incident with the belt. According to an neighbor that saw them, and that is on many videos on LinkedIn. It's really hard. It is hard to confirm. Right? But if that is the case, would they not have it on his 
tracking on his car that he was at that house on that Sunday. The police would have all his tracking from his car. It's not an old car, it's a new car. It'd have the tracking on, unless he took the tracking off, turned it off, because I've heard you can turn the tracking off. I don't know how true that is. I'm not a driver, so... I don't know anything about cars. All I know is they've got four wheels, four doors, an engine, and chugs along the road. <laughs> That's my knowledge of a car. <laughs> Get you from A to B. Bless all, and that is as many videos. So many videos, on the I know we're telling a lot of videos, but the one video I watched, it was. Someone she knows, or they know, confirmed it to them that he was there. But as I said, if that was case, it'd be on rec it'd be on his data, right? And I'm sure it would be on do ring doorbell because when you turn a car on, you put your headlights on. You'd see on his door, on a doorbell, or on someone else's doorbell, going past someone else's house. Ring doorbell. You know what I mean? It'd be caught on. There's got to be cameras on just and lights and all that lot on the highway. There's got to be cameras. It would be recorded somewhere that he was driving back. So him saying. Oh, I was in Memphis. The police could call him out on that and say, no, you weren't. We've got evidence. You was at the house on the Sunday night. We've got this, 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 and this. We know where you was Sunday night. You was not down in Memphis. So, I don't know. But it's bad on the police's half that they're not... Because the police aren't giving anything out, the news uh, news reporters aren't reporting it. And because news agencies and reporters aren't reporting it, it's not getting any headline news. It's not getting any headline news. Why is that? Right? Is it because they've got connections with CP and his family? I don't know. It's not far-fetched. A lot of people do have connections with the law enforcement. You just got to be that bigger man in law enforcement to stand up to him and say, you know what? You know, you're not getting away with this. We've let you off with so many little things. We're not letting you off with this. You cannot, you know, we're not letting you and stand up to them. Takes a big man to stand up to a family like this. If they've that, if they've got that much control over law enforcement, it would take a big man. And to be honest with you, even though I like that uh, sheriff of some of the county, well, I did like him at first. I don't think he's got the ooh to stand up to them. I really don't. Because don't forget, a lot of he may have gone to school with a lot of them. If he came from Hendersonville, as a child, if he grew up there, or Gallatin, or wherever it was, he may have gone to school with them. So, it's hard to say, and we'll never know the truth on that, unless it comes out. Someone has to come. The only way we're going to get an answer to this is if, as I said last night, if someone talks, that's the only way the guy getting an answer to this is if someone talks, right? And that was it. When I was watching one of the interviews today, and I was talking about what they did on a Sunday, I knew she said she went home first. It's got her here. They picked up the niece. She confirmed it with CP because she looked at him and he's nodding. 
They went to BJ's Colossal and had Sebastian had a colossal popcorn. Then I came home to put the groceries away before going to the bowling alley and then went to Edith's Roadhouse. And I was doing some map time today, just marking up places on uh, Google Earth. And I could I could see I'm going to BJ because actually I've got it there. I'm gonna put it up. Google it there. But to show me twenty twenty four. Right. It only goes to twenty. They haven't updated since 2022, as far as I know. So, but, oh, but I, what I did, I mapped out, I pinpointed all the places that said they went that way. When this opens up. Then it opens up. But um, it's going to open up. Come on, it's opening up. Here. All right, let's go. Let's go. Right. We'll go to Sebastian's home. Right, which is oh god, let's go. For some reason, it won't do what I want it to do. Come on, right. So we've got Sebastian Hope, yeah? There. Right. BJ's. There's a BJ hot chicken. And over here somewhere, there's a BJ, oh, that's it. There's a BJ's wholesale club. Right? But I don't think that's the one they went to. They went to the BJ's Hot Chicken because... Is that it? No, that's the bowling alley. BJ's. Alright, uh, let's just go in a bit. Oh, come on. Um, they went to and I said they went to BJ's right because it was after he said they got he said uh, she said they, he got a colossal up call from there from there they came home dropped off their groceries like the snacks and all that lot then went back out to the Bowling alley. Right, let's get rid of this. And then from the bowling alley, they went all the way over here to Texas Roadhouse. So, But I'm sure 
I'm going to have to list, literally go through every flipping interview they have done. The first interview. I'm getting short versions of that very first interview she ever did with a newsreel. I'm sure she said they went to BJ's, we got a went bowling, then they came home, and then they went out to Texas Roadhouse. Yeah. And then came home again. And look at that as well. The magic number three is coming to me. One, two, three. Three places they went to that day. Hmm. Number three is coming to it again. So, I am going, I swear to God, she said she went BJ's and bowling first and then come home. Went to Texas Roadhouse. But then in this interview, I think it must have been Chronicles of Olivia. Or one of them. One of the interviews, main interviews, I was quickly going through. She said they went to BJ, come home, then went bowling all the way back there again because of bowling. And BJ, literally, BJ's. There's a bit of grocery shopping, gets the snacks, goes to BJ's. Goes all the way home, come back, all the way back here again to go bowling. Oh wow, we haven't had such a fun day yet, have we? They went to Texas Roadhouse. Uh, Hey, that doesn't make sense going all up right. He's disappeared from me. He disappeared from his own like many children. No accountability, fully disappeared. Where is the justice for their children? Exactly. His home looks pretty secure. He's, dis he's disabled, unlikely. He would not have left barefoot, not on his own. He wouldn't. His dad has even said that. He wouldn't do it. It's like. Children, autistic children, they like routine, right? They like routine. And they don't like that routine changed. So, and... So, when they're in that routine of, before going out there, well, especially after having that incident with the fire ants, don't forget you had that incident with the fire ants, He, he never went outside without some shoes on, be it slippers or trainers or shoes. He had something on his feet. Now, I think Chris and Katie used that as a punishment for him by putting him outside barefoot. I think that was one of the punishments. You know, when I said they put him outside, I think it wasn't just put outside with shoes on. He was put outside barefoot. That was a fear he had. And it was a genuine fear. You know what I mean? So that was a punishment they would have with him. So, but routine is... He can go, put his shoes on, and walk out the front door. Even though his mother said they are the use of front door because the car was in the garage, so they go from the kitchen into the garage. So he put his shoes on by the front door and then walk through the house with his shoes on, right? To go to the garage. Uh, but that was an extreme fear of his. He, did, he would not go out the house without shoes on. So it doesn't make sense. But as I said, in this, it just seems 
such a lot. I'm going to BJ's, going home, then coming all the way back here again. Can go all the way. All the way over here. Have dinner. And I think this, yeah. To, and then get onto this road here. This is one of the routes I can go. Get up onto this road here. Join this road. And which will take me to Shackle Island. To, for the road house. You know what I mean? But why is controlling the narrative? He wasn't there. So he keeps telling us all he wasn't there. And in that, in that phone call we've just seen, right? Him say, we were on a. Uh, on I please ride with them with law enforcement. I was the only one who did that. His ego, oh my God, if it couldn't get any bigger. Oh. I'm the only one they like, took on a police. Have you ever thought, Chris, to Katie? But oh, yeah. your mother is there, isn't she? Katie was scared of both you and your family. She knew what you were like. She'd seen you in action with Nina. Now, you wanted your daughter. I don't think... I'd give my son up to look after another child, someone to look after us. live with us, but we... Finally, you, me, Sebastian, and Faith. But there's no way I'd give up my child to take on his child. No way. But that's what he wanted to do. He was the one who approached Seth to arrange to arrange him to have Sebastian. Right? I don't think he was due to go to his dad's in May. I really think Seth, uh, Chris wanted Seth to take Sebastian sooner. I really do. Because Chris was, for some reason, he had it sort of like, he knew he was going to get in custody of his daughter. If it wasn't for Sebastian, he could have had custody of his daughter. I really do believe that. Right? So he needed Sebastian out of that house before Sebastian wasn't going to be out of that house until the end of May or May sometime. So something happened, something odd. Was Chris there? We don't law enforcement aren't telling us anything. And then he sits there and he says, We have all been cleared. No, you haven't, Chris. No one has been cleared. Even Seth has said this. No one has been cleared. The investigation is ongoing. And no one will be cleared until the investigation is over. Get that in your tying in CP. There's an investigation. Right? And no one's going to be cleared until that investigation is over. Sorry to tell you. So I hope you sleep well in bed, Chris and Katie. I really do. I hope you sleep well. Knowing that your son is out there somewhere, lying in the dirt, in the ground, wherever, in the river, you name it, wherever it is. You. So I. Chanty is alive.
because I wouldn't like to be either of you two if he comes up unalived. I would not. But there is time for blame, the blame game, after Sebastian is brought home. I don't think we're, I'd like to stay hopeful and say he's still alive. But the odds are getting slimmer every day. Oh, yeah, I never, you know what? I hadn't thought of that. I'm going to get my mouse to work. Say so he did walk out where are the footprints from the morning due. They would be there, wouldn't they? Yes. It was early morning, so there is a morning dew. You get a morning dew in the winter, in the even in the summer, you get a morning dew. So there would be footprints. I've never thought of that. That hadn't even come into my head. Thank you. I'm going to write that down. I'm going to write that down. I really haven't thought of that. Right. Morning, you. On grass. Where are footprints? Thank you. I had not thought about that. But I don't think he did walk out. And that, what Chris was saying about there was five dogs. No, only one dog hit on Sebastian's scent that led them up to that drainage pond. Why? Only one dog. And you hear that in the uh, uh, dispatch call, the, re the released dispatch call. And I believe the dog's name was Max, and that Max dived into their pond. Only one dog, not five. There may be other dogs there, but only one dog upon the scent. And like I said, I think that scent could have come from Saturday. Could have come from Friday. It could have come from Thursday. How many times did the mother put him outside as a punishment? How many times did he go, you know what, I'll just walk, I'll walk around these houses. I'll go up to the construction site, see what's going on. How many times did he do that? Yes, he probably... You don't know, perhaps he did have shoes on when he went up to the construction site. He may not have. There may have been times where his mum probably put him out so having no shoes on. And he took that chance on walking. Because it was daylight, he could see where he was stepping. You know what I mean? But, so I don't hold much with that one dog picking up that scent. Because if there's a full scent, a proper scent, those dogs will get picked up where we walk to the bus stop to get the school bus. Now we get picked up all that. Now we get picked up him coming from around the garage to the front door, as the neighbour said. She's seen him one day. Get out the car to get the post out the post job, out the post box. And he skipped along to the front door, then realised, oh, I've got to go around the back door. He did not know the code to that front door. He did not. Right? So then he's realised and gone round the back. Where's the scent from all these days, the days beforehand of him? Going from the garage to put the trash out, going from the uh, post box to the back door. Where's the scent? Have you? Wow. That's interesting to know. I'd love to be able to track footprints. 
you know what I mean? I'd love to be able to distinguish, like, certain footprints when, you know, when you're out in the woods somewhere and you see little footprints. I can only tell what it is. If it's very little footprints, I can say, oh, that's a bird. <laughs> Don't know what bird, but it's a bird. <laughs> but I'd like to know more about footprints and the, the, what how it belongs to what animal. I think that's so interesting. But, yeah, so I'm glad you brought that up because I had not thought about that, the dew on the grass. But then, would the police not have disturbed all that when I come to the house? You know, they could come up and along the path, wouldn't they? I don't know. Here, they don't bother pathways, they just cut across gardens, <laughs> jump hedges, anything to get to the person's house. Um, I don't know. I've seen police when I lived in Birmingham. Literally, they were going to a neighbour's house, my neighbour's house, and um, they were looking for a certain person. And we seeing them, because I'm up in the bedroom, and I was seeing them, I was seeing them crawling past my garden, right? Crawling up their pathway to their front door, but someone must have alerted them because then all of a sudden we heard, he's out the back window. So they're jumping over the fences then to get to him in the back garden. But he hurt his, the person hurt his ankle or his foot as he jumped out the back bedroom window. <laughs> oh my God. But the fact the police were actually crawling on their hands and knees to get to this house without being seen. Now, why they did that, I don't know. Why they didn't just come across my, my other neighbour's garden, park the cars up that way, cut across her front garden, cut across my front garden, right? And over the fence again into their front garden, right by their door. Because I've seen police cut across gardens that way. But the fact that it's crawling. But anyway, getting off the subject again. Oh, God. But, as I said, there's no definite, because why can't, why won't the police, this is what gets me, and it's, it's annoying a lot of others, why won't law enforcement, how, how they try to, sorry, yeah, they said, said it was home. Yeah, we've heard that, but as I said, if he was at home, would it not be on his tracking? Would they not have him on the neighbor, one of the neighbours' ring doorbells or one of the neighbours' home security video? They'd have something there to say his car was there. Unless they have got that and they're just saying they haven't. But if they have, with all the flipping lies that CP has come out with over the last nearly 60 days, right? they have got enough evidence with that video of him being at the house, maybe, and all the lies and discrepancies he has come up with to pull him in. So... Because I seriously believe he was not supposed to be at that house because while the CPS was doing their investigation into that bout incident, which he just fobbed off and said nothing happened, there wasn't taking any further, there was no investigation. Yes, there flipping was. Yes, there was CP. We've seen enough cases now. I haven't done that many cases, but I've watched enough cases. And believe me, they've got enough on you. They just want that one bit of evidence. And they will get it. Believe me. 
And what I don't agree with is, and I'll stick up for you here, CP. I don't agree with them tracking him as is. Oh, he's back down in Memphis. Oh, she's back down in Memphis and all this. No, leave him alone. Because I can assure you, someone's tracking him. Someone is. If they've got information that he was at home on that Sunday night, when he's telling them he was not home. Right? And now, uh, this would be another question that would have been put in that polygraph. Was you at home on the Sunday between this time and 9pm? If he said no and he was, it would come up as a lie. But then again, we've known some big serial killers pass a polygraph. You know what I mean? We've known some major people pass polygraphs. So, to me, they don't mean nothing. It just shows if they're going to be deceptive or not. It doesn't... So, yeah, okay, if they're being deceptive, they can say, okay. So this question we've asked him about him being at home, it showed him being de deceptive. So we know to focus on that area, right, of the investigation. It just points some in direction where to look. Anyway, but thank you for that. I'm going to keep that in mind that morning, too. Oh, that was where the other three, number three, come into it. Apparently, it was 3 a.m. in the morning when those lights were seen, or some at 3.10, but three come into it again. Some about the number three. Apparently, uh, um, uh, someone who lies a lot uses number three. Like I went to um, I went to the shops to bought three bags of crisps, right? And then I went to where then I picked up three flowers. Then bring that number into it when they're lying. And there's another number they use as well. I think it's. Five or seven. It's an odd number, not an even. It's an odd number. So those are numbers point out that they are being deceptive. They are lying. When they start, when you start using the number three a lot, and it was only right. Get this. They say those lights mean nothing. Even. Chris has said those lights mean nothing, right? Why then, Chris, did you and Katie turn around and when those that video was released, why did you then turn around and bring in the fact that, oh, Sebastian had his little hand torch, his little key ring chain, chain torch. Why did you bring that into the... And then you say, oh, it don't mean nothing. It's not what you think it is. So we caught you on another lie then. Because I don't think Sebastian had that keychain with him. Right? Because I'm sure if he was going to leave the house and he picked up his keychain, he could have picked up his uh, money, he could have picked up his phone. And if you look at Madeline Soto, where was her phone when she went missing? Oh, yeah, at home. Every person that's gone missing, their phone has been left in the car or at home. It's never on them. Because they know people can track the phone. I'll tell you something, Chris, you've been watching far too many FBI files. Far too many. But some have said there's a good liar and, uh, and he, he's getting away with it. No, no, he won't get away with it because if they even ever 
start doing a forensic search. They can still find evidence, believe me now, if they wanted to. Right? I cannot understand why they didn't do a forensic search of that house the first day, when they had no scent from the dogs, no video coverage from the houses, no ring doorbell video, nothing. The only thing they had was a scent from one dog. And as I said, that scent could have been there from the day before, or even two days before. But that's the only scent they had was from one dog. CP, don't lie, one dog, there may be more, but one dog. Listen to the police recording again. One dog. Because I'm sure if there'd been another dog that hit on it, it would have come up. I'm just, my dog, I'm just tracking a scent now with my dog. It could come through on the radio. But nothing come through on the radio about another dog picking up a flipping scent. Nothing. I swear to God, CP, you think you're clever. You think your mom and your dad are clever. Uh, stepdad's clever. They may have connections with law enforcement. But you know what? One day, that sheriff may not be sheriff no more. We may have a new sheriff in town, a sheriff that is willing and prepared to stand up against you and your family. Because that's what we need, someone who is in the law enforcement who is prepared to stand up to you and your family. Because the way you treated your wife, your ex-wife, is disgusting. It was vile. The way your family went over to where she was living and told her to get out with a baseball bat in their hand before he smashed the, hers and her children's heads in. Disgusting. Disgusting. You and your family. You're nothing. You're all mouth. You can only fight with weapons. You're vile. You threaten women. You don't threaten men because you can't intimidate men. Right? Unless you've got something on that person. Right? That's how you intimidate people. And I think you said something to Chris the other day, uh, Seth the other day, and it involved something about Sebastian. And perhaps you'd release it if he didn't put forward you and Kate in a good light. You know what? We knew this would happen. We knew you wouldn't get off your fat ass, pardon my French, to get out there and help him. We knew it. Tell you why you are not looking because you know where. Sebastian is, and God help your soul. God be with you when they find this child. I hope and pray they find him quick. I hope and pray there's law enforcement officer is big enough to stand up against you and your family. TBI, he's, why aren't they doing nothing? Hopefully, bit of luck. I've got the uh, petition. I'll pull it up. I'm going to pull it up. I'm going to put it out on chat. Please, if you have not done this, please go and sign it. Just sure. Do my cat moan. Yeah, it's moaning because he wants to go to bed. Oh, God, this laptop. It's my internet. It's so fucking, fucking annoying.
Right, here we go, where are we now? Screen yard. Here's the petition link. Please, if you haven't already, if you're watching this on replay and you haven't already been and signed that petition, please go and sign it. It may not, it may help, it may not help. But if he gets the support and showing to the FBI, look, these are these people. All these people want you to come in and step in. These are people that live all across the world. I've signed you. I'm from the UK. I've signed you. I'm sure there's others from the UK who have signed you. And there's people from Europe, all over the world, who have signed this petition to get FBI to step in and take over this case because this is not going to die. We will not let this case die. We are here for Sebastian. And we just want Sebastian brought back home to his dad. And then I hear people say, oh, well, it shouldn't be better going back to his mum or his dad. Oh, on, No. <coughs> <coughs> Pardon me. Oh, on, Let me just get some juice. See, water wasn't working last night. I'm hoping the juice does. Right. So, you've got everyone. If it shows them, people across the whole of the world are, are supporting Sebastian, want to bring Sebastian home. More than his own mother, people who've never met his child. I've never met him. And the first day I heard about him was on the Tuesday after he went missing. <coughs> <coughs> My heart went out <coughs> to him then. So, it might be... Hmm. They're not going away, these people, are they? We've got to do something here because we're not going away. Listen to the voices of the people. They are not going to be quiet. We are not going to be quiet. We are not going away. Hold on. So, sign this petition, it takes minutes, literally minutes, just two, three minutes it takes to sign it, right? And it, you have them. But, CP, oh, that was it. That <laughs> just made me realise then, with my cough. Did that, when we was watching that video, Earlier of Chronicles of Olivia. Did you notice the <coughs> by Chris? Yeah. He's telling her because she said he was already then stopped herself and then she goes on to babble on about something else and he gives out a cough as to say, get back on track. And then she's like, uh, uh, um, uh, we did a, 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 a three way call. She lost track. He did that cough to get her back on track. And that's why I, she goes down there to Memphis with him because he won't leave her at home no more because of all these rumours, which I hope they are rumours because it's not for her on the neighbour if it isn't. If it isn't true, you know what I mean? If he's married and he, he isn't true and people are saying he was having an affair with her, then this is not good. It's not fair on him. So, I hope it is false. But then again, perhaps he's single. He may not be married. Right? 
because you don't hear nothing about this neighbour's wife. You hear about this so-called neighbour, but you don't hear about the so-called neighbour's wife. So perhaps he is single. He may be a widower. He may be divorced. But then again, I thought, okay, today, go for them, does she? She goes for married men. Chris is the same. He don't go for single women. He goes for married women. Women. You know what I mean? Two peas in a pod, them two are. They suit each other down to the earth. So. What else was that? Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Mm -hmm. Just looking at my notes. But I would, anyone who's watching this on replay, I would, please, if you haven't seen already, it will be in the description, the link to Nina's interview. As I said, just take it a bit at a time. You don't have to watch it all in one go. It's took me, how, how many weeks has it been now since she's done that interview? Three, four weeks? It's took me that long and I still haven't seen it all yet. Right? I thought I'd even shared it and I hadn't, so I, I shared it today on my Facebook page. Um, what else? CPS dig up. We said that. No one has been cleared. And the lights, he said the lights above the garage were on. Well, I'm sorry, if they was on, they would be seeing some sort of figure after taking that trash, bringing the trash bin out, or bringing the trash down the drive, they'd be seeing some sort of figure from that light from the garage. Yeah. And you'd be able to tell whether it was a slim build or a big build. <coughs> <coughs> and Katie is no slim build. Where Sebastian is. But when Seth said he couldn't tell if it was Sebastian because it was A, too grainy, too, too, too dark. And the only thing that was you could see was a little, very small hanged like pocket torch. Sort of torch you can have on your key ring or keep it in your pocket. Right. So that isn't that big a light. Just shows you where you're stepping, really. And that's it. It doesn't light anything else up. So. Those lights were not on. Were not on. And I'd like to ask Seth that question. Uh, when you see the the video of the trash being brought down to the curb, were the garage lights on? I'd like to ask him that question. Because I don't think there were, but Chris says there were. They were always kept on. But I've noticed in someone when they've done their little checkups on the family and gone round by the house. Right? That one of the lights is not working now. One of the lights is not working on the garage. So unless say she's gone back and fixed that light, I do not know. But I noticed that. First of all, both lights were on. Then someone went round one day and you noticed one light wasn't working. I noticed that. But I'm sorry, those lights were not on on the Sunday. They couldn't have been. Because you could pick up some sort of figure. You really would have picked up something. So. But his family are a piece of S-H-I-T. How they have got away with all this controlling 
You know what I mean? That's what makes me think they have got some sort of connection with law enforcement. You know what I mean? They have got some sort of connection with the law enforcement. It says so in that interview. Nina says it in the interview. So why would they not still have that connection with law enforcement? Right? You would have that connection. So, anyway, I've been here two hours, 22 minutes. All we've come up with about CP is, is a piece of SHIT. And you will, he will be caught. Now, as for them uniting and working together, that is not working out because... Take my headphones off. Don't need them on now. Right? That is not going to work. We knew that wasn't going to work because Katie has no connection with Seth. Anyway, she wasn't even talking to Seth before. So why would she start talking to him now? So I think that was just a ploy by Chris to say, look, you're making us look bad, right? We've had enough of this crap. Start making, stop putting us in a bad light, and, right? And Chris has probably, Seth has probably come around and said, I'll tell you what, then, start working together. Let's start working together to find Sebastian because that's all I want is to find Sebastian. And S Chris has probably said, yeah, okay, yeah, whatever. So then Seth has come back and said, look, if you can't get on the same page, there's no team Seth, there's no team Team KPCP, there's no team, it's Team Sebastian. If you can't get on that page, then F off. And I totally agree with him. We're not here for the parents, we're here for Sebastian. Okay, I've just sat here for two hours and talked about CP and his family and KP, right? And, but to be honest with you, this isn't going to help bring Sebastian home and to be honest with you nothing us YouTubers do will ever if they can identify Singwa on an image of the, to him to go to a tunnel exactly exactly they've got the technology to to really work on that ring doorbell they really have that's why um, you've got like, is it C CIA or someone like that, some other organisation coming in because they've got all that technology. They can do all that with photos and videos. So, but you no, know, as I said, um, I think it was his dance. The dance he had with Seth was. Enough to tell me that was, oh, hi, how are you doing? Let's all be friends in meeting. That was not a noisy, noisy, chatty, watty meeting. That was, F you, you are making us look stupid. You are making us look like devil incarnation, reincarnation. Uh, no, it's not love. You're doing that. But I think he's also got some on Seth. I think he's got some against Sebastian again. On Sebastian again. And Seth is thinking, you know what, I'm not going to release that information. No, I'm not releasing it. So he's probably said, right, well, let's just all work together to find Sebastian. Let's bring him home. That's all I want. You say that is what Katie wants. I believe that. You know what I mean? So, he's the one playing the peacekeeper. So he's gone off, said what he said, and we knew it wasn't going to happen. We knew it. 
There's no way. And as far as I know, he still hasn't been able to get in touch with Katie. So, we know this ain't going to happen. It's not going to... Right, and I'll tell you now. If he has threatened Seth with something about Sebastian again, he's going to turn on him again. You know, say, look, you're not going to hold this over me no more. I don't care what you say now. Come out with all your little threats about Sebastian. But this is not happening. You know what I mean? And he'll come out and publicly say it. Because Seth is not one for being hound a fool. So we'll see. But like I said, there's a lot of places I went. There. There's three places I went. He was overstimulated on the Sunday. No way was an autistic child going to go to all that, go to all those three places. Thingy political says another autistic 13 year old child to find 200 miles from his home. Three weeks later, there is hope. Wow. Yeah, there's hope. If law enforcement are out there fucking doing their job, I said, why can't law enforcement have a box of flies in their boot of their car? Right? And when they've got a quiet period, when they're just sitting in their car, watching the traffic go by, why can't they go out their fucking cars and go out and put some flyers on other people's cars. They will find Sebastian, but not, it's got to be whole lot kept in the news. It's got to be kept in the news. And no, they're not keeping him in the news. It's because they're not releasing anything. So because there's no information, news uh, groups aren't, Reporting on it. I think he does, but that's his own channel. Right? That's separate to his the other channel he does. He has to go by what they say on his uh is it closing arguments or opening arguments he does? He does one and a woman does the other. So he has to go by what they say on that. But on his own YouTube channel. I wouldn't believe this new video of a man claiming to have Sebastian. This was a guy that stole another guy's idea. Yeah. It doesn't help find Sebastian. And if I see any YouTubers with that in their title, I don't even click on it. Hi there. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm so... Uh, while all my lives are there, so take your time, right? Watch them in order if you can. Watch them in the order, right? So you go from the first week with Sebastian upwards. Right? Now, I've been covering this nightly now for the last... Um, two months nearly. Sometimes I've had either Magdalene Soto in with it or Elijah Boo. But for the last few weeks, I've been focused on Sebastian solely for the last three or four weeks. I will be doing a live on the 26th, which is Friday. Right? It won't be a long live because I have got my grandson here. But I'm working on doing a video to play. And it's just a short one. It's just like a half hour long. And it's for Sebastian. Sebastian only. Right? Not about Seth. Not about Chris. Not about Katie. Not about law enforcement. Not about TBI, FBI, no one. It's all we're focusing on Sebastian. Because that will be 60 days on the 26th. That's 60 days to the day. Right? So I'll do the I'm working on the video tomorrow, putting that together. So I can just play that. Right. 
say hello to everyone first and then I'll put the video on and just watch the video, right? Because it's just photos of videos and the two video clips that we've got of him, right? And things like that. So it's all about uh, Sebastian on Friday. Yeah. His name is Sebastian Wayne Rake Rogers. Right. So, um, yeah, so on Friday it'll be just Sebastian Wang Drake Rogers. Right. I'll come in, I'll start off by saying hello and everything, and then I'm just going to run the video on the live. Okay. I may have to do it in two separate videos. I don't know yet. I'll see what I can do. Because I'm not that technical yet with doing videos. So, but it's all about Sebastian on Friday. Well, it's, it should always be all about Sebastian. It shouldn't be about anyone else. Put our differences aside. So I think come Friday, I will. Well, I've got, I'll do it now because I've spoke about Katie and I've just spoke about Chris and his evil, nasty, fucking narcissistic family. So I've got that out of my system now. And now I will just focus mainly on Sebastian because that is who we're, why we're all here. That is why we're here. We're here for Sebastian. If it wasn't for him, we wouldn't be doing this. We will not be doing this. Right? So, as I said, I'm going to put a video together tomorrow and we'll just play that video on Friday night. You can comment. You can put your comments up as the video is playing. But just remember, it is all about Sebastian. So make your comments about Sebastian on Friday. Right? Those green hearts out there and everything. Okay? So anyway, I'm going to call it a night. Hang on, I'm going to take, have a drink and go to bed. I'm tired. Again. So, thank you for being here with me tonight. And I'll see you tomorrow night. And... Oh, come on. So I'll see you tomorrow night. Thank you all for being here. Bye.